An important step in photolithography is the spreading of photoresist on top of the wafer. So photoresist is a material that is um, by default a liquid. So we have a liquid material and we want to spread it on top of the wafer to form a regular uh, film of photoresist and then we want to solidify it or uh, change it into a solid. So the reason we uh, apply photoresist as a liquid to begin with is that that allows us to form a fairly regular coat of the photoresist on the wafer. So the photoresist is applied as a, a liquid on the wafer and then the wafer is rotated. As the wafer rotates, uh, the photoresist starts to spread outside due to a uh, uh, centripetal force and it starts to spread towards the uh, uh, outer parts of the wafer. Eventually we will achieve a full coverage of the wafer but the point is we want this full coverage to also be um, something that gives us a regular coverage of photoresist because remember what we want to have is the substrate, a layer of oxide on top and then a layer of photoresist on top of the oxide. That layer of photoresist has to be uh, of uh, even thickness because the thickness of the photoresist will determine how long it takes for it um, to change its chemical nature when we do exposure. And it will also determine how long we need to um, bathe it in the development liquid before uh, it is stripped away. So achieving uniform distribution through uh, the 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 whole area of the wafer is important. Now, when we start to rotate the wafer, uh, at first we will spread out the photoresist, but we will have a wave-like pattern on top of the wafer. Uh, this wave-like uh, like pattern is due to the interaction of air and the resistance of air with the fluid surface of the photoresist. Photoresist is not exactly a um, a liquid it's a very viscous liquid so it will show some resistance as it is spread across the wafer uh, this wave like pattern is irregular and is against our requirement of regular coverage and so we start to spin a little bit faster and what happens is that these waves will start to gather towards the outside eventually they will form beads on the uh, very outer rim of the wafer uh, the perimeter of the wafer um, is usually not used to uh, make dyes or chips and therefore it is safe uh, to have a layer of a photoresist that is a little bit thicker uh, at the periphery. Now, uh, we cannot take the photoresist in liquid form and um, use it in exposure and development because uh, liquids will flow even if it's a viscous liquid it will flow so if we start moving the wafer then the film will start to deform but more importantly if the wafer comes in contact with anything the um, photoresist will stick to that anything and that anything could be the masks we use for exposure for example in which case we are not only uh, doing uh, damage to the wafer or to the photoresist coat of the wafer we are also doing damage to the uh, photo masks themselves. Thus, we cannot leave the photoresist in, uh, in uh, liquid form or in uh, fluid form. We have to solidify it. Uh, solidifying a photoresist is done by baking it. So we in introduce it into a, uh, an oven. That oven has to be uh, oxygen poor, otherwise, uh, when we heat, there will, have, there will be some oxidation of the materials, so it has to be oxygen poor because all we need from the uh, oven is to evaporate the water content of the photoresist so that it starts to solidify. Now, baking um, is usually done in steps. So we do a soft bake and then a hard bake. Um, sometimes there's also a, an intermediate bake uh, in between. So baking is done uh, in a few steps, as I said. Um, there's soft baking and there's hard baking and there's an intermediate bake. And there's a reason we have to do it 
in, uh, in steps. So the first bake is called a soft bake and is usually done at a relatively low temperature for some short time. But fortunately, this soft bake is going to drive away most of the moisture in, uh, in the photoresist. Uh, the, uh, the main aim of this initial bake is to solidify the photoresist so that it, it, is, it does not spill from the wafer as we move it. And this is done uh, before we do exposure. And so we do a soft bake before we do exposure. The reason we don't do all the baking we need before exposure is that the rate at which the photoresist changes its properties under exposure will depend on how solid it is. Uh, more fluid uh, photoresist is going to be more responsive to light. Uh, very solid photoresist is not going to be responsive to light. And so we need to do only a soft bake that is just good enough so that the um, photoresist is not going to spill over and is going to be uh, more or less a solid. Then we do an intermediate uh, bake or a second bake and this is um, done before uh, development. So this is done before development and it's um, required because it helps the photoresist attach to the wafer properly. Uh, again, when we bathe the uh, photoresist in development liquid, uh, the rate at which the photoresist um, melts in the solvent is going to depend on how solid it is. We cannot make it too solid, otherwise it's not going to melt in the development liquid. Now, um, there's something important to point out here, which is that it's wrong to assume that exposed photoresist is going to melt in, is going to dissolve in the solvent and unexposed photoresist is not going to. What happens in reality is that the rate at which exposed photoresist dissolves is usually higher than that of unexposed photoresist. How much higher depends on the amount of baking we have done. The more baking, the less the differential uh, solubility of the two uh, photoresists and thus the less our ability to form the features, which is why we reserve the hard bake, uh, which is the final bake, which is going to completely solidify the photoresist till after uh, development. And this has to be done before etching. Recall that etching is the process by which we open features through the oxide. So what's going to happen is that we are going to expose part of uh, the photoresist through development. And now we are going to use an etchant, which in the case of wet etching is, a, is usually a liquid, to uh, eat through the oxide below the photoresist. So at this stage, we need the photoresist to adhere real well to the oxide where it is not, it has not been developed. The reason is that it needs to protect the oxide that lies below it. And so there's no kidding at this point, we need it to be extremely solid. We couldn't have done the hard, uh, hard baking from the beginning because it would have uh, severely complicated exposure and development. Now, there are two types of photoresists. There's um, negative photoresist and positive photoresist. Uh, the distinction between the two is which type of, which part of the photoresist can be stripped away by the solvent. So in positive photoresist, exposed photoresist, photoresist that has been exposed to light will dissolve in the solvent. Uh, in negative photoresist, on the other hand, uh, unexposed parts can be stripped away. Uh, in all the examples we will see here, we will be using uh, positive photoresist, but negative PR is also a possibility that you can that you can use.